All right, so this week we're doing one of my favorite lessons, confidence intervals. They're just so fun. So I suggest that you guys get a really good grasp on these because like I told you last week, um, we build off of these and hypothesis tests for the rest of the semester. You know, we really just go forth and do a lot with um, with confidence intervals and different variables and whatnot that we use with them. So you guys want to make sure that you do have a good grasp on these. So let us talk really fast about samples and populations. A bit of a review, but also <clears throat> this is important when we start doing confidence intervals because you will be seeing a lot of different um, symbols that we use and you want to make sure that you understand them and you're using the right ones. So um, this is just a table that I suggest you guys um, understand, you know, not necessarily memorize, but the more and more that you do, uh, you know, problems, you're going to realize and you're going to understand it better. And these will just kind of be in your head. So these are the um, the symbols that we use for sample statistics, and then these are the ones we use for population parameters. And then, you know, this is just showing you like this side is telling you what we're talking about. So a sample mean, we use X bar. A population mean, we use mu, so on and so forth. So, and then just a note down here, um, when we're talking about uh, sample statistics, they are gonna be random variables and they vary from sample to sample, because remember, we are taking that sample from the population parameter, and that is um, how we get to make an inference about the population there. So, um, this is just important because when you're writing, uh, when we get to hypothesis tests and you're writing them, you always have to make sure you're using the correct symbol in those. You wanna make sure you understand that these symbols do mean something um, in terms of you're, if you're referencing a sample or or a population, so definitely keep that in mind. Okay, so this is just kind of talking about like just the basis of what a sampling distribution is because um, confidence intervals are gonna be based upon um, a sampling distribution that you find. So you're gonna, basically it's when you take all the samples and then basically put all of um, the data on a, a graph for, a, um, for the distribution. So it's basically a visual of all the data that you have. Um, so, and then just a mean and a standard deviation, um, like we've been talking about before. And we also, we do call the standard deviation also the standard error. Um, that's just another term that we use for it specifically for a sampling distribution here. All right, so um, going on further for the standard error, um, basically, so if a sampling distribution is constructed using data from our population, um, so if we're taking a sample from the population, then the mean of the sampling distribution will be approximately equal to the population parameter. And that's under the um, condition that our sample is representative um, of our population, so that's why it should be, um, they should be about the same, because that's what we want. We want our sample to be representative of our population so that when we make an inference, it's actually, you know, reliable, it makes sense. Um, so, and then just to keep in mind, these uh, connections here are categorical variables um, that always goes with proportions. So if you're working with categorical variables, you are going to talk about proportions. And then quantitative variables, you are going to be talking about means. Um, so, and it makes sense, the categorical, so for example, an example of a categorical variable that you'll see off, often is like a yes or no, um, like a response is yes or no. Um, so let's say that you asked 100 people, so that's your N, and then, you know, 22 said yes, and, you know, what is 70, 78 said uh, no. So in this case, that's you're obviously going to use a proportion, so if you're trying to figure out, you know, how many people said yes, you know, you would do 22 over 100, so your total. So that that's how that makes sense. Um, and then quantitative variable, for example, um, if you're talking about the number of students in your class, um, and then you, you just took, or the number of students at Penn State, and you took a bunch of samples and whatnot, um, obviously that's gonna end up being a mean there. You're not gonna have a proportion of something over something. So um, those are things just to keep in mind. Um, and it can, this can help you in terms of the fact when you're thinking about, um, you know, if you see a problem with the categorical variable and you're trying to decide if you're gonna use, um, you know, P or if you're gonna use mu or whatnot, uh, then you can think of it this way. And so, you know, if you have a categorical variable, you're gonna be using P and P hat. And then this note down here, it does have an inverse relationship with sample size. So as our sample size increases, our um, standard error does decrease. Cause our standard error is saying our standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So like how far out, remember that's our spread. Um, so, you know, think of it as error. We don't want it to be wide. We want it to be small. We wanna have less error. Um, and inverse relationship with sample size. So the more, uh, the bigger sample you have, the less uh, spread of error you're gonna have, basically. Okay, confidence intervals, woo, amazing. 
shaking in my boots. So, all right, so confidence intervals, uh, the definition, a range computed using sample statistics, so remember the samples we take from the population, um, to estimate an unknown population parameter, because we don't know that, that's why we're using a sample, um, with a given confidence level of point estimate plus or minus two times the standard error. So that is our, you're gonna see that um, general equation used the rest of the semester. So that's a general equation we do use. Um, so you can basically either have, oh, and, um, just to put a note here, this multiplier isn't always two, but for the beginning, we're mostly going to be talking about 95% confidence intervals, and that's the multiplier you're going to use for it. So I'm just going to use that as um, the multiplier for all of our examples for now, but keep in mind that's not always going to be two, but we'll get into that later on. Um, so the really the only thing the only equations that you can have is, and this is where it, it's important that you use the right symbols. So your sample point estimate, so p hat plus or minus, and then two times your standard error. Or you can have, if we're talking about means or quantitative variables, x bar plus or minus two times the standard error. So these are like your two options basically, depending on if you're talking about um, proportions or means. And um, so these are the general equations, just like um, this says right here too. And so our point estimate, uh, okay, I just said this, yeah. So those are um, our sample statistics and then that's gonna be your center. Um, so if, for your confidence interval for um, proportions, your P hat's gonna be center. Um, and then we said, remember, if this is approximately, if this is, you know, representative of our population, we're gonna say that this is also approximately equal to our population mean, um, or population proportion. And then for means, yikes. First one was so pretty, and then this one, oh, sad. So then our, our center is going to be here, x bar, so our sample um, mean, which is about equal to our population mean. Um, so this, see, this is why you got to know all those symbols, because, um, you know, we'll use them, and uh, you want to make sure you understand why we're using them. So, um, but yeah, if it's representative, and if you took a random sample and whatnot. Um, and like I said, the multiplier is 2 for a 95% confidence interval. Um, this is from the empirical rule, which we'll talk about next. Um, and the standard error, you'll use either, um, either you'll be given it or you can use the rule of sample proportions or the central limit theorem, which we will get onto um, later on. So, and then once again, um, so as our sample size increases, the confidence interval becomes more narrow, which is good because we want to have, you know, if you're trying to guess, you know, if someone said, I want you to guess, um, the number, a number in between these two numbers. You would want to have a small range of numbers. If they said, I want you to guess between one and 100, you know, you'd probably, you'd have a better chance if you were guessing between, you know, one and five. So you want it to be narrower so that you're more confident that it's in there and then you have like a better chance of getting it. So that's why we always want to have a large sample size. Um, that is, you know, the best thing we want to have. We always want, because that's going to be more representative of our population then. So then if our sample size um, is larger, then we're going to get um, it to be more narrow, uh, our confidence interval, which is good. This is what we want. Narrow, oops, narrow is good. So, so yeah, that is confidence intervals, and that's like a, the general idea of them to start out. And like I just said, so our empirical rule, this is um, what we use basically to base all of our, um, off the confidence interval, all of it we're basing off of this. So our 95% confidence interval here, um, like I said, we're using the two as our multiplier. That's where this comes from because on our empirical rule, um, we are using a normal curve. Um, and this is just a notation for normal curve and then comma. And then, um, we show our mean and our standard deviation. This is, we'll talk about this later, but, um, this is how you write, you know, to denote that's a normal curve. So for this one, it's a normal curve with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. That's why you see here we have mean zero and then our standard deviation Every time you go over one, it's plus one and plus two and so on and so forth. Um, so this is like our standardized um, normal curve here. And then because when we're trying to find our 95% confidence interval, it's showing that in between plus or minus two standard deviations, 95% of the data is within here. So that's why we're able to make a 95% confidence interval using the multiplier of two. So that's where that number comes from. Um, okay.
Okay, so and then after we do our confidence intervals and we get to the end of it, um, the end of the problem, we want to interpret it. You know, we don't want to just have a range of numbers and we don't know what it means. So we have, um, we are 95% confident that our population proportion or our mean in question is going to be between and then the lower bound, the upper bound that we get. Because after you do that confidence interval equation, because it says plus or minus, the plus is going to give you your higher bound and then the minus is going to give you your lower bound. Those are the two um, numbers you're going to use, which I showed you here um, as an example. And then um, I put here either population proportion or mean, um, because um, it's both going to be population, so either your population proportion or your population mean, um, that's what, because we're making, remember, we take these sa samples out to make an inference about our population, so that's why we're saying we're confident that, based upon our sample, that the population proportion is between these numbers that we got from the sample there, so that's how we interpret that. Okay, so bootstrapping, um, it, people, people make this more complicated than it is. All you want to do is think about it is, you're, it's just, we're taking samples, but it's, um, we have, we, t we do replacement. So after you take a sample, you don't just take another one. You have to put that one back for first. So like we often use this if we don't have a large enough sample size. So for example, if you were, uh, you only had 10, a sample size of 10 and you were taking samples out of five, you know, you'd only get two samples out if you did it a normal random sample way. Um, but in this case, um, you would take the five out and then you put them back in. That's the main idea. And then bootstrap distribution, like we talked about before, sampling distribution is just presenting um, whatever samples you get um, in the observations on a curve so that it's a visual representation of those. Okay, and then these are the two bootstrapping methods that we do have um, for finding a 95% confidence interval. So we do have our standard error method and our percentile method. Um, so keep in mind that when we do our standard error method, our sampling distribution does have to be approximately normal for this to work. Um, if it's not, then we can't use that. We will have to use a percentile method um, that re works regardless of the shape, if it's skewed, um, so on and so forth. And that's because technically, whenever you have a data set, there's always going to be 100% of the data. So no matter where you are on the curve, it is going to be representative of what percent of the data lies at or below, you know, a certain point. Um, so that's why it doesn't matter. But for standard error method, we're always, um, that relies upon a normal curve that I was showing you in the empirical rule. So that's why we do have to have it, you know, kind of resemble that and be approximately normal for us to use that one. Um, so yeah. All right, let's do some reviews. Woo. All right, so this is reviewing our, um, the, what do you call them, the symbols. So which statement here is true about both P and mu? So let me know what you guys think and then we will review this together. <laughs> okay, an honest answer. I don't know either. I'm just kidding. Okay, so um, <laughs> so for this one, so remember that table I showed you. Um, actually, let me go back to it just to remind us. This. So this is showing you, these are all the symbols you use for sample statistics. These are all the ones you use. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Definitely. And remember, I'm, we'll have, I'll post this on YouTube too, so you can like pause it and this and that. Um, so let me know when you get it um, so I can go back, but that's what these are. Um, this is like the, the common ones we use for, okay, cool, for samples and then population parameters. So then if we go back to this question, um, we have, okay, here. Um, so if we go on this one, our answer here, well, if we look here, so P and mu are both statistics, untrue, neither of them are statistics, so A is not our answer. B is correct because P, P and mu are both um, parameters, which if you remember from that table, they were both shown there. Um, C is not correct because P is a statistic, that's already incorrect, mu is a parameter. This is true, this is true, but the other part, is, and then P is a parameter, this is true, and mu is a statistic, but that's not true, so that's why it can't be those other two, so that's why our answer is B, so good job. All right, let's do another one. All right, so in a random sample of 100 preschool children, 70% like carrots, that's nice. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all preschool children who like carrots. So I just gave you the standard error here. You don't have to um, calculate or anything, so it's more conceptual. So try finding this um, confidence interval, and then we will review how to get it together.
Yeah. All right, cool. Let's go over it together then. So remember our, um, okay, our general confidence interval formula is going to be our point estimate. And in this case, since we're talking about um, proportions, that's going to be p hat. And then plus or minus two for a 95% confidence interval times our standard error. Okay, so if we pull all of the um, values out, whenever I have a statistics problem and it's in like paragraph form and I'm like, whoa, I like to go through and kind of just take everything out. So P hat in this case is going to be the 75, excuse me, 70% 70 who like carrots. So that's our, um, the proportion. So remember, this is a categorical variable because um, this is like, do you like carrots or do you not? So yeah, remember when I was talking about the yes or no, that's going to be a categorical variable. So that's why we're using proportions in P hat. So P hat is going to be 0 0.7. And then we have our standard error, at, as I gave you down there, is 0 0.046. So then plugging this into the equation, we're gonna have 0 0.7, and then plus or minus our multiplier two times our standard error, 0 0.046. And then you, if you solve this out, you end up getting a lower bound of 0 0.608, and then 0 0.792. So we can say, as a conclusion, we are 95% confident that the, and then remember we're making an inference about the, the population. So the population, uh, that the population proportion of all, oops, I'm struggling, preschool children who like carrots, Um, is between, and then if we, you know, change this to uh, multiply this by 100 to get percentages, we can say it's between about 60.8% and then and 79.2%. Um, so that would be if we made a conclusion too. So d does that make sense how I solved that there? Yay. All right, cool. Not a problem. Thanks for listening. <laughs> All right, um, so let's do another one. So which of the following is true about the population mean and the sample mean? So try this one out and then we will review it together. <laughs> okay, so let's review this one. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, remember, our population is going to be fixed. Um, so we want to remember that since our population is fixed, because you think about it always something like the U.S. Census or something like that. Um, so that's going to be, so yeah, our population is fixed. And then the samples that we take out, remember, we take samples from the populations. Um, from the population and those are going to be random because we want to make sure there's no bias or whatnot. Um, so our answer here is D because the values of the sample mean are going to vary because um, they're variables um, and then to the distribution of the sample mean. And so none of these are correct because um, this one's saying values of the population mean will vary. This isn't true. Um, values of both the population mean and the sample mean, that's not true either. And then A, um, that does not, that's not true either. And it says that sample values will not, but that's um, we want to make sure that we have the idea that samples are going to um, vary. And then, like I've said up here, populations are going to be fixed. So our answer is D there. Does that make sense how we did that one? Woohoo. 
right. All right, so here you stack key to do a distribution here. Um, so, and this is just a bootstrap distribution. So remember with a replacement. So we did 5,000 bootstrap samples drawn from an available sample of 500 commute times. Um, this bootstrap distribution has a mean of 29.099 and a standard error of 0 0.930. Using the standard error method, what is the 95% confidence interval for the population proportion? So go ahead and see if you can solve this one out. This one's more, um, you know, you have a lot of the numbers already, so you don't really have to solve them or anything. But um, so try this one out and let me know what you think. <laughs> All right, so for this one, we want to do the same idea. Um, and now we're talking about means. So our general formula for means uh, is going to be for our uh, confidence intervals for mean is our x bar. So our sample mean plus or minus two for a 95% confidence interval times our standard error. Um, so here, it, we if we pull out all the information, we have our x bar is going to be that um, the bootstrap distribution here. So the 29.099. And then um, our standard error you can find up here, or well, and actually, you know, it says it down here too, but also in the stack key, it says it up there. So our standard error is gonna be equal to 0 0.930. So if we were to plug all this into this equation, I'll put it down here, we are gonna end up getting 29.099 plus or minus two, our multiplier times our standard error, which is 0 0.930. And then if we go forth and solve all this out, we're gonna get a confidence interval of uh, 27.239. Um, these are means, remember, not proportions. We're talking about uh, quantitative variables. And then comma, zero point, um, our higher bound, 959. So that is our answer here for that confidence interval. Does that make sense how I solved that one out? Woohoo! All right. All right, let's do one more here. So data from a representative sample of 507 adults who exercise regularly were used to bootstrap a 95% confidence interval of the mean risk diameter in centimeters of the population of all adults who exercise regularly. So I give you a mini tab um, express output there. So I don't want you to um, inter or get a confidence interval. I already gave it to you down there um, on, on the bottom here. Um, so try to interpret it in terms of that we are 95% confident, whatever. So try to write that statement out and then we will go over it together. Okay, yeah, so I know it's a little bit small. So 
Um, basically, remember when we interpret a confidence interval, we always start by saying um, we are, and then whatever percent is in here, we're 95% confident. Um, okay, good. So, okay, so you start off good. So, yeah, we're 95% confident that. And then remember, we're making an inference about the population. So we're, we took this sample and we're making an inference about the population. So we're 95% confident that the population, uh, population mean risk diameter, because that's the, um, oops, that's the, uh, ah, the variable that we're looking at, the quantitative variable. So that the mean risk diameter, of and then this is all Americans who exercise regular or all all adults yeah all adults who exercise regularly um, is between and then the numbers down there which is um ten point four six zero two and then comma ten point six two one seven so. Um, so we're saying we're 95% confident that, and then remember, this part is either your population mean or your population proportion here, since we're talking about um, quantitative variables, we're going to talk about means. I got the numbers from right down here. Um, yep, no problem. So, uh, and then whatever the variable we're looking at, which was risk diameter, and then of, and then what the actual population that we're talking about was, um, and then um, is between them the two numbers we get. So does that interpretation make sense? I got that. Yippee. All right, so that's all we got for tonight. So like I said, you can go ahead onto YouTube and check out this review as well as the other ones that um, I post every Thursday. And our next review will be next Thursday at same time, same place. And we'll go over the next lesson. Um, so if you have any other questions, let me know. If not, you guys are good to go for tonight. And please just give me your Penn State email if you haven't already. And thank you so much for stopping by.